Hey Fogropoly, John here, and this is Fogropoly's Focus, where I share some cool photography-related things I've found on the internet this week, and I start a discussion topic for you to talk about in the comments below. This week, we learn about hyperfocal distance, rediscover a neat way to stabilize your camera for around a dollar, get some tips on bounced flash, and I talk about the idea of investing in photography as a hobby. Let's bring it into focus. Hyperfocal distance is a common technique used in landscape photography. Basically, it involves setting a focus point of your camera in such a way that the entire scene is in focus. A recent article on DPS by Jim Hamill goes through the basics of calculating hyperfocal distance and how to use it properly in the field. The most important takeaway from this tutorial is that hyperfocal distance isn't something you should use in every landscape scene, but rather those that are of a really vast subject, something that doesn't have a strong foreground element or a strong subject within the frame. If you do have those types of things, you'd want to consider focus stacking or just focusing on the subject itself and letting depth of field do its thing. In the article, Jim also includes a great printable guide so that you'll never actually need to do the math to figure out where to set your focus to achieve hyperfocal distance again. As always, the link will be in the description below. Don't want to carry a tripod around with you everywhere you go? Or maybe there's a location that won't let you bring a tripod into, like a museum, for example. Well, this week I came across an age-old trick, and I thought I'd share it with you in case you hadn't heard about it. The video is less than a minute long, and the total cost of this little gadget will be about a dollar, but the best thing of all, it can fit inside just about any pocket in your camera bag, so it's really quite convenient. Give it a watch, and let me know if you've ever used something like this in the past in the comments below. Every time I ask people what skills in photography they want to learn more about, inevitably flash photography shows up on that list. Having not spent a whole lot of time with flash photography myself, I'm always happy to share great tutorials when I found them on the web, so this is one of those. This great tutorial on bounced flash comes from lynda.com, and it should get you started in the right direction. It's geared more towards video production, but this type of thing can be applied to flash photography as well. You just have to make some modifications. It's definitely worth the watch if you got the time. As usual, the link will be in the description below. Finally, this week I'd like to talk a bit about investing in photography as a hobby. There's no question that taking photographs is popular, and it's becoming more popular as cameras continue to improve and the prices continue to drop. So this trend will obviously continue. But how should you go about investing in photography as a hobby? It is expensive after all, and there's only so much money to go around. There are three main areas of photography that I think are worthy of investment. Gear, software, and education. Gear, of course, is the most fun to invest in. Who doesn't like getting a shiny new lens? Not to mention it's always easier to enjoy something that you can touch and use. Software is also another fun way to invest your money. Again, much like gear, software can help inspire you to try new things or even help develop your creative style in photography. Education, however, is one of those areas where you get that question with so much free stuff out there, like YouTube and blogs out there, how do you go about investing money in that and justifying it. Education, however, is one of those areas that you get that question, do I really need to spend money to learn photography? There's so much information out there for free on YouTube or just the web in general that it really is a valid question. Now, of course, one of the biggest benefits of actually investing in education is that it's going to save you time. Paid courses or ebooks are typically structured in a way that's more conduct conducive to learning. The biggest benefit of investing in photography is that it's going to save you time. Paid courses or ebooks are typically structured in a way that's more conducive to learning than searching YouTube or the web for how do I take better photos. But of course, as I mentioned, investment doesn't have to be 100% monetary. You can invest a whole lot of time into finding the free tutorials that are worth watching or reading, and you can learn quite a lot doing this. Of course, if you don't have the time, then the only other option is money. So I would really strongly urge you to consider both options and weigh them according to your own personal needs. However, if you do go with the free content route, just be careful because 
there are a lot of free products out there that can point you in the wrong direction because the instructor may not know what they're talking about, or it might just be that whatever they are talking about has gone out of style or has been optimized with new technology. So just be careful to keep that in mind when you're finding free stuff and try to stay as current as possible and with reputable instructors rather than just Joe Schmo off the street. As always, if you liked what you've seen here and you'd like to see more, click right here to subscribe.